Hello and welcome back to Ask OIT. If you know anything about OIT, know that we're here to help. We understand technology can be intimidating. There's always something new, like a gadget, app, or tool to learn, and we recognize that it can be hard to keep up with. But we want to help make technology less intimidating. That's why we're here. Each month, we'll answer any questions you've got about tech. You can send us your questions, and we'll do our best to help you out. We being me, Yasmin Yahya. And me, and Jesse Plaza. Then we'll share our expertise with you at the end of each month. Jesse, are you ready to answer some questions? Let's do it. Okay. We've got some questions about MFA, which is appropriate considering faculty will be required to have MFA set up by August 16th to continue accessing standard root systems and software. So let's tell our Hilltoppers what they need to know about MFA. Okay, so starting off with what it is. I'm sure you have heard us ringing from the bell tops about MFA and why you need to set it up. And you know it's called multi-factor authentication, but you're not sure exactly what it is. Well, I like to go with the, uh, the bank metaphor. Um, you log into your bank account with just your password. It's super handy and super convenient. It's like a, a key that you don't have to actually physically have. It's great and nice, but would you give your key out to anybody? Would you put your key anywhere where someone could maybe get it, like a notepad? Or would you use the same key on another lock so that maybe somebody, you know, puts some silly putty in the keyhole and then makes like a dummy key of it and they can... The analogy is getting away from me, but passwords aren't as secure as they used to be. Or rather, in today's modern world, they're just too easy to misplace, to reuse, to get leaked somewhere. Maybe you use your password on a different service and you're good and safe on this service with your St. Edward's account, but that other one gets compromised and then your username and your password are out in the open and anyone can sign into your account. Long story short, signing in with just a password is old hat. So we're rolling out multi-factor authentication so that your password isn't good enough because something that you know can be anywhere. It can be given to anyone. And once that gets out, it can be hard to get it back. So in addition to something you know, like your password, you'll also sign in with a second factor, something you are or something you have, something that can't be so easily disseminated throughout the web, uh, like a code that's texted to your phone and only lasts for a certain number of seconds or minutes, or a USB stick that you plug in, or a phone call, or a bunch of other methods. So this way, sure, okay, your password gets leaked. Maybe you accidentally click on one of those phishing websites and log into a fake page. Well, uh, in the old days, that'd be all someone needs to take over your account and start messing with stuff. But when they sign in and they don't have your second factor, they don't have your phone for the app or the text or the call or the USB stick, they can't get in anywhere. Your account becomes way more protected and taking it over or attacking it becomes much harder. So we're rolling it out because it's basically the gold standard for security now. You're probably used to this if you have an iPhone. Every time you get a new Apple device, you sign into your Apple ID, and then one of your other ones sends you a code, and you have to put that code in to prove that you're you. Essentially, multi-factor authentication is about logging in with more than just a password to protect your account. Very well said. I have a question for you. Oh? You mentioned, uh, you know, reusing passwords. It's it's easy, but why should you maybe not reuse passwords for everything? Sure. So, you know, going back to the whole key in the lock thing, if you have a key that works in multiple locks, well, great, that's so many more doors you can get into. Similarly, if you use the same password on multiple websites, well, look in your nearest, you know, text section of the newspaper and you'll see another one every week. Services just keep getting compromised left and right for various reasons. Either they're attacked by top secret state sponsored hackers or someone left a login page unauthenticated and someone was able to just waltz in and see people's passwords. You can't trust internet security these days. You really have to take it into your own hands. So if something that you use gets uh, taken over and your password gets leaked, you'd better hope that that's only good for that one account or people that want to mess with you or log into your stuff or rob you are going to start trying that username and password or that email and password on a bunch of different services. And if you use the same info for your St. Edward's account, they'll see, oh, this person works for, teaches at, goes to St. Edward's University. Let's see what I can do. 
They could go and order a bunch of stuff with your top pretender, or change someone's grades, or delete files out of your Google Drive because they hate you. The, the reason doesn't really matter. There's a bunch of things someone could do to ruin your life if they get into your account, and we don't want that to happen. Excellent. Thank you. Um, so that's all fine and good, but how would uh, faculty, staff, student, anyone with the St. Edwards account set up MFA? Okay, this is actually the easiest part. I don't have to go on any like melodramatic uh, philosophical rambles this time. You actually just do it through your account page, the same place you would go to change your password. You just go to identity.stedwards.edu and you sign in. And then when you hit that button to edit your profile as if you're going to change your password or do something else, there's a button at the bottom called extra verification and it has all these different methods you can choose. Off the top of my head, you can get a text message sent to your phone. You can use an app if other services make you use MFA, like Google Authenticator. That's one of the ones I do. It gives you a code every 60 seconds. I have like 20 accounts in there. You can use an app from our identity provider, Okta. It's called Okta Verify, and it just sends you a push notification. I have an Apple Watch, so every time I get my prompt, I just tap my wrist and boom, it works. Uh, if you don't have a smartphone or don't want to install an app on your personal phone for work or school purposes, you can get a phone call. And if you're really paranoid, also like me, you can get a USB stick, a security key that you physically plug into the device you're signing into. Um, that's similarly, if you have a MacBook or a, a Windows computer that has that Windows Hello face scanning, you can use that as like biometrics, like in the movies. Uh, we have a bunch of different options, but you just go to your St. Edward's account page, you go to go and edit your information, you pick a method and you enroll in it, and that's pretty much it. And you don't have to set up all of them, right? No, no, it'd be insane if you did. Um, I think that everyone's best met with either the Okta Verify or the text message, personally. But uh, you don't have to set up all of them. I recommend setting up, you know, more than one. So let's say, hypothetically, you get the new iPhone. <clears throat> Excuse me. You get the new iPhone. You go and set it up. You transfer over all your stuff. Well, so someone can't just restore a backup and then have your codes. That app isn't going to copy over in your backups. So then you'd be locked out. But if you also set up the text message, well, if your phone number didn't change, you can still log in. Or likewise, if you get one of the little USB sticks, you can set that up as a backup method. So if you lose your phone, you can still sign in. And of course, it's just like a password reset, where if you don't have access to any of your factors, uh, the help desk over at support.stedwards.edu, our students can uh, help reset that for you and get you back into your account. So you're never like locked out forever. Hmm, that sounds easy enough. It's Do super have... simple. We brought in all these different methods. People can choose the one they want to set up. If you don't want to use your phone for it, you don't have to. If you want to be super secure, use a USB stick, you can. Uh, basically, we've given people a bunch of choices to pick the method they think is most convenient for them to secure their account. And that way, not only is the university protected, um, you're protected as well. Um, I have a fun little anecdote if uh, you have the time for it. Sure. Okay, so just a couple of weeks ago, I was at orientation and I was, you know, giving my spiel to our incoming students, telling them why they need to do this. And I get a notification that someone's account needs to be closed down real quick because they clicked on a phishing messages, a message. They, they saw something, it said, hey, sign in here, I need you to do this document. And, you know, they maybe didn't look twice, they signed into a fake page and boom, their account was taken over and used to send out spam. It happens to the best of us, sure. But if they had had MFA turned on, nothing would have happened. That person would have been able to take over their account and send out annoying job scam spams. Um, so we got them set up with it, and now they're protected forever. So it, it's not just a hypothetical. We are getting these sorts of attacks. We're getting these sorts of phishing scams. By protecting your account, you stop them from spreading to other people. The less chance that people have of getting compromised, the safer we all are as a community. And that's... That's why I really want everyone to turn it on. That and we're forcing you to. <laughs> well, it's cer certainly make, uh, you know, our cyberspace a lot safer, for sure. Um, my personal favorite method of authentication is the fingerprint scanner. Yeah. It's just more convenient for me. Um, but I believe I have all five out of five set up on my account. Not that you have to. Why but... would you do that to yourself? You have <laughs> so many methods. Well, I do like that I can choose, you know, um, let's say, um, 
the one that usually comes up for me is Okta, but um, maybe I'm closer to um, my fingerprint scanner on my laptop, for example. Um, I can choose whatever I want whenever I need to, um, depending on the context. So oh, it's okay, just that makes sense, me. I guess. I'm a, a bit more paranoid in that I've only got the Okta Verify app and the security key. I keep it locked in a safe, so if my phone you know, falls off a cliff or something, I can still get in, but hey, we can all do it our own way and our accounts are all just as safe. So, yay. Love to hear it. Well, that was a lot of really good information about MFA. Thank you, Jesse. Uh, any final tips or tricks about MFA that you'd like to share? It's a lot easier than it sounds. You're not going to get prompted on every login. Obviously, it would be really annoying if you logged into something, five minutes later you log in again, and you got that prompt both times, but you're on the same computer. Obviously, it's going to be you. It's going to try to remember the last uh, couple of devices you've used, so you can tell it, hey, this is me, this is my device, don't bother me every time. You'll maybe get it once a week or so. Uh, but if something like physically impossible happens, you sign in from Texas, and then 20 minutes later, you sign in from China, I don't think they make planes that fast, so you're going to get a prompt on that other account. And if that other sign-in from China isn't you, they're not going to be able to get in. So um, we, we like to think that it uh, learns your behavior over time so you don't get constantly prompted with that second sign-in. But at the same time, when you do, it only takes a couple of seconds. So it's not like the old days where you had to wait 30 seconds for your login profile to load from the network and all that old computer lab stuff we had to put up with in the late 90s and early 2000s. Yeah, the only time I get uh, prompted for MFA is when I'm, I use like one of the computers in the library, which is not very often, uh, right. um, but it's already, you know, learned that sometimes I'm at my home office and sometimes I'm at the St. Edward's office um, and it's pretty easy. I also still like getting those emails saying, you know, sign in detected, even if it was me, because I know that systems are in place to keep me safe. Yeah. Yeah, if you ever get a random message saying you've logged in on a new device at three in the morning and you know you haven't signed in to anything in a while, well, you know, maybe give us a call or uh, better yet, an email. Mm -hmm. um, and Jasmine, where can anyone contact OIT support if they ever, uh, never, ever need our help for MFA or anything else? Oh, fantastic question. Support.studwords.edu. Um, it'll have all the resources that you need and then some um, specifically our contact information you can chat with us you can send an email use our contact form um, either way whatever method of contact you choose someone will get to you um, if you can't already find the information in our um, you know abundance of <laughs> knowledge base articles which we have so many so i suggest searching for the answer first Wonderful. I'm glad that we uh, get paid to keep people safe and secure and knowledgeable in an ever-changing, ever-terrifying internet landscape. Well, I think that is it for all of this month's Ask OIT. Remember, uh, whether it's about robots, tech accessories, cybersecurity, or, you know, you just need some general guidance, we want you to pick our brains. Even if it's not necessarily work or university related, we are happy to answer your questions. Um, you can also follow us on our social channels, Twitter and Instagram. It's at S-E-U-O-I-T on all of our channels. And we'll keep you updated on anything important from OIT and then, you know, events, tech tips, exciting stuff always. Um, I think that's it. And we'll be back next month. See you later, y'all.